Father, I just thank you right now for your anointing to boldly preach your word. And I thank you for open ears to receive your word and for the transformation that you are bringing about in our lives and in this church. And everybody said, amen Amen and amen. When Jesus, that night before he was crucified, the night that he knew that just within a few hours he was going to be taken out He was going to be beaten and scourged. And he was going to be, a cat of nine tails was going to go on his back. And he was going to be beaten so severely that some believe that he was almost disfigured. Before he knew that the next day, he he knew that the next day he was going to the cross. And he was going to be nailed to that cross. And he was going to absorb into himself all the sins for all the people for all time. That night, when he was sitting with his disciples, eating the last meal, he held up a piece of bread. How many of you know healing is the children's bread? And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He held up that piece of bread. And at that moment, he made the divine connection between the revelation in the Old Testament and who he was, and who he would be throughout church history to us. Let's start with the first scripture, Exodus 15, 26. He said, God said to the, to the Israelites, if you will listen carefully to my word, to the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands, and keep all of his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptian, for I, say it with me, I am the Lord who heals you. So what is God doing right there? He is giving a revelation of who he is. He's giving you his name. And if you go back into the literal Hebrew, the I am the Lord is, is the word Jehovah. It doesn't say I am the Lord. It says, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah, I am the Lord who heals you, Rapha. That's only two words in the Hebrew, but we break it down and interpret it, I am the Lord, Jehovah, who heals you, Rapha. He's giving you his name. So in other words, he had already introduced himself to Moses as I am that I am at the burning bush. Remember that? And as Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he turned to the Israelites and he gave them another revelation. It's almost like if I walk up to Dom and I've never met him before, I would walk up and say, hi, my name is Connie. I would introduce myself, right? God is introducing himself to the Israelites by saying, I am Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the God who heals you and heals everyone for all time. I am your healer. That is who God is. He is our healer. Amen? That's something to get excited about. I am the Lord who heals you. And then Jesus, as he was holding up that bread that night, after that core revelation, he's holding that bread up, and he's... And we can see, as we read in the Old Testament, the Messianic prophecy, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Surely he took up, uh, took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was what? Pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus is thinking about this messianic prophecy in Isaiah 53 as he's holding the bread that night with his disciples. And in Matthew 8, in the gospel, it said 8, 16, and 17, when evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all the sickness. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. What? 
He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So Jesus is sitting there. He's reflecting on the, the prophecy of Isaiah. He walked out that prophecy of Isaiah through healing people. And he's sitting there that night. And Peter is looking back then. 1 Peter 2.24 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And by his wounds we were healed. We were healed. The Old Testament prophesied of him. He walked it out. He hung on the cross. He paid the price. And Peter looked back to that night that we're going to celebrate in just a minute communion as Jesus sat there with that bread. By my stripes, you are healed. Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Do you remember whenever the children of Israel were being bitten by snakes? Do you remember that? And God said to Moses, make a serpent and put it on a pole. And all the people who look on this serpent... On the pole, in other words, what was killing them, we're going to use that to come against that thing. Whoever looks upon that will be healed. Is that what it says? And is that what happened? And then John, talking about the gospel, we're talking about Old Testament, we're connecting New Testament with that. The gospel of John 3, 4, 14 and 15, it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness... So the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. So right there we're seeing that divine connection of the Old Testament with the New Testament and what's being lived out through that sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. Psalms 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all our, re- our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, and who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth will be renewed like the eagles. Who he forgives what? All your sin and heals all. All your diseases. If you look that word up all in the Hebrew, you know what it says? You're right. It says all. All. That's exactly what God, he said what he meant, and he meant what he said. He healed all of our diseases. So, beloved, any doctrine or any teaching that you have heard in the past, you need to be like that that Southern Baptist pastor who said, I had to take my denominational glasses off and lay them down. If you have heard in your life that God does not still heal today, and he says that that you have been taught that miracles passed away with with, with the disciples or with the apostles, beloved, church history proves that doctrine wrong. God has healed throughout church history. And at the turn of the century, there was just like a veil that opened up. And God has been powerfully moving through by his spirit in the 20th century and into this century. Amen? We are living in what is called the last days. And the power of God is being manifest in the earth today like never before. And it's only increasing. Amen. So if you've been taught God doesn't heal today... I'm here to tell you the Word of God in the Old Testament. Go back and read it in the Old Testament. Connect it with the New Testament and receive it today. If it is in the Word of God, it's our promise and our invitation from God to go after it. Acts 10.38 Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by God. 
Is that what it says? Oppressed by whom? Jesus went about doing good and healing all. He was thought, what he was, he was what, what was he doing? He was healing, which we're talking about, right? Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Amen? So can we agree right now that sickness is not of God, but it is of the devil? And we have the right and the power and the authority by the name of Jesus to drive that out and tell the enemy to get his hands off of us? We have to get angry about this thing and realize there's a divine warfare going on. And beloved, Jesus has paid for our victory already, but we need to take that victory that has already been given to us and enforce it in the, in the name of Jesus. Amen? All sickness is of the devil. John, 1 John 3, 8, the reason... The very reason that the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. That's the reason Jesus came. Man, I could just go off on an hour teaching him how we abdicated our authority and Jesus came to give it back to us and we have the keys and he's given us the keys with all power and all authority in his name. Now nothing is impossible for us. And when we really begin to believe that and act on that, honey, the devil's on the run. How many of you are going to push in with me for this? In the same time, he held that cup. And he said, this is the covenant of my blood. Which is what we're going to partake of this morning, right? The bread and the blood. Revelation 1, 5, Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has what? Freed us from our sins by his blood. I'm running out of time. Let's just go next scripture. Revelation 5, 9. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Amen. Beloved, we've been purchased out of darkness and we've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Amen? We are new creations in Christ Jesus. We've gone through that birth canal of the cross. We left the old life behind. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen? We're a new species. We are made in the likeness and image of God. Better than the first Adam. Because if, the, if, if, if we're not better than the first Adam, then the work of Jesus really wasn't as powerful as the original sin. Beloved, we are a new hybrid creation of God. The Spirit of the living God lives in us. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ephesians 1, 7. In Him, we have redemption. That's like we've been purchased back through the blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. These are good verses. Man, you just ought to memorize these. Colossians 1.20, through Jesus to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, to make peace through his blood shed on the cross. Beloved, you and I have peace with God because of Jesus' finished work. In Hebrews 9.12, he did not enter by means of the blood of bulls and goats or calves or whatever, anything else, but he entered the holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining redemption, eternal redemption for you and I. Beloved, we're talking about on the cross, it's what the old Pentecostals used to call the double cure. 
That cross is the double cure. It takes care of all of our sin, and it takes care of all of our sickness. By his stripes on his body, the bread of life, as we consume that, we are healed and we, the blood of Jesus covers us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness and makes us holy. We are the saints of God. We are not sinners saved by grace. We are saints of God today. We are holy and righteous in his eyes. And if you're struggling with some kind of a sin issue that's there in darkness, the only reason you're struggling with that is because the power of the cross has not reached that one spot yet. But that does not mean that you are not the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It means you need to let it go and invite the power of God to come into that spot and set that spot free. Yeah. It's finished. He sat down. The blood has already been put on the heavenly mercy seat. And beloved, you've been invited to sit with him on his throne to rule and reign in this life, to bring the kingdom of God to bear upon the circumstances of life around us. Freely we have received, freely we release this life out to others as we go about in our workplace, as we go shopping, as we in encounter our family members. Freely we have received. We are a conduit for the power of God. That's what we are called to be. Hallelujah. And all we have to do is receive it. How many, are good, good, how many are receivers this morning? Put your hands up. Let's just be good receivers. Good receivers. Good receivers. Matthew 10, 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them what? Authority. Say it again. Authority. Say, I have authority. I have authority. I have authority. To drive out impure spirits and to heal every, all disease and sickness. Do you believe that? Man, that's another good one to tattoo on your body. Amen? Psalm 103, who forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. Thank you, Father. Father, I bless your people this morning. Lord, freely we have received and freely we walk out these doors to give. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you, Radiant Church. You are loved. Have a great week.